So, good showing of the young folks. <laughs> I'm just happy to see uh, a lot of faces that I know. Uh, it's good to see y'all. Looks like the ladies way outweigh the men tonight, so. <laughs> We're on our own, guys. <laughs> um, so there's, we want to, where's the birthday girl? Stand up. We just, we want to bless you. Father, we bless her in her birthday. I bless her with a, a year that's full of revelation and joy. More joy, more joy, more joy, more joy, more joy. Yes. More joy. Yes. Come here. <laughs> 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 I felt the anointing come on me for joy. Okay. So I'm just going to, just Father, I just release joy over your daughter. Mm -hmm. Just say, Lord, I receive that. Lord, I receive that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I saw a cup just get filled and flow over. Father said, you need joy. That's what he's given you for your birthday this year. He said, you need joy more than you need anything. And I just got some joy. So a while ago, yes. when somebody was praying for me, I needed that too. So the Lord filled me up. Then I just felt, like I said, I felt the anointing come. I feel it tangibly. So the Lord is filling your cup to overflowing. So I saw the cup going up and up and up, right? And then it overflows. And then everything you pour in on top of a cup that's already full just overflows, right? So you're going to live in the overflow this year, the Lord said. Mm -hmm. The overflow of joy. Mm -hmm. You could use that, right? Yes. Yes, you could. <laughs> so, Father, I bless her. Thank you. <laughs> I've got that on your Thank you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, I let your ruach blow on her this year in a way that she's, that's never blown on her before. To bring her understanding bring her counsel so that she can have the, a, a sure direction that you're taking her. Well, I thank you that you're, you've, you're putting her feet, that you are, uh, you've prepared a path for her to walk in, Father, and that you have ordered her steps. And this year, you're going to make sure that every step that she takes is the step that brings her back to you, back into a place of, of freedom, a place of joy. <la> so I just, I just saw an angel come in. So this angel's name is Joy. <laughs> so the Lord just released the angel of Joy to go with you. So she's, and it's a female. She's standing here. She just walked right up. She's pretty big, pretty tall. So she's going to go with you. So I'm just going to give you her hand. Wait. So you can just take her hand, and you can just go walk back with her, and she's going to sit with you. <laughs> God's good, right? So Father, I thank you for the night. Uh, Lord, I pray that the hearts be open to hear your message, what you have for them. Uh, Father, that we'd be teachable more than anything, Lord, that we'd be humble and that we would yield to you. Father, we don't know much, but we're willing for you to teach us. Let that be everybody's uh, um, attitude towards you, Father, and toward uh, their walk with you. Uh, because in these times, Lord, things are uh, not what we seem, not what they seem. And the things that we do know... Uh, you're challenging in us. You're challenging your children to come up to a, a greater place, uh, to you know, from glory to glory. And that means that we have to let go of the things that we we've learned and even unlearn some things, so that we can learn your ways. Because your ways are higher and your thoughts are higher. So, Father, I yield to that, yes. and I pray that they would too. And Lord, I pray that the, in their hearts you would light a fire mm -hmm. in them uh, that to know, to seek out, and and to crave truth like they've never you know never craved truth before because the truth um yeah it not only sets you free my father but it's certainly different than the truth that we are now walking in so with that we thank you yeshua and uh okay so we'll stop there uh tonight i want to talk to you about passover i know that excites miss sheila back there and we want to thank sheila for filming Bless you. And it was your birthday, too, uh, here recently. So bless you, Sheila Lundy. She's 30 again. There's that 29. Uh, she's been uh, a friend of this ministry. We love her. We thank you very much and bless you, too. So um, it, when I was getting ready earlier, I was like, Lord, you know, going through all my Passover notes. You know, I've been doing Passover for a while. And uh, the Lord kept s saying the same thing to me. So I'm like, I'm smart enough to know that that's the, same, the thing I'm going to tell you. 
and he's Passover is not Easter. It has nothing to do with Easter eggs. Amen, amen. So, if you don't get anything out of tonight, <laughs> Passover is not Easter. And it has nothing to do with Easter eggs. Thank you. <laughs> uh, see, the children at the, 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 at the base of Mount Sinai, when they, you know, built that golden calf, they thought they were building the calf and worshiping the God that delivered them out of Egypt. But 3,000 people died that day. That's, so God is serious about us worshiping Him in the way He wants us to worship Him, not in the way we think He wants to be worshiped. Not in the way we think or the way we've been taught by tradition to worship Him or come before Him. It's an abomination to Him. You know, Christmas trees, think about it. You put a tree in your house, and then you bow down to it with gifts, you know. That's, it's an abomination to Him. Same thing as Easter eggs. That's Estar. Estar is the, uh, um, the name of the fertility God that they're, you know, we're celebrating in our churches, and people just blindly walk to it because that's all we've been taught. I'm not condemning you. I'm just saying wake up and let's actually look at why we do what we do so that we can do something different because that's what God's calling us. He says, come out from among them. So He's waking us up and uh, calling us to, uh, to worship Him in the way He wants to be worshipped. No, I went off on that little ditty. So, <laughs> um, so I, again, I'm going to talk to you just not real long. I'm not going to make this complicated. Uh, I'd rather, you know, I'll just give you what the Lord told me to give you, and then we'll move on and, and, uh, and, and minister to you guys, because I know that's why you came. <laughs> but you've got to hear the message first. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a captive audience for a few minutes <laughs> before we do that. So... Um, in Leviticus 23, verses 1 and 2, it says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, and say to them, The feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim, holy convocations, even these are my appointed feasts. He said my. He didn't say these were Jewish feasts. They're his. Um, so if you look at feast, feast is moed. And moed it, it, in the Strong's is number 4150. It means an appointment, i.e. a fixed time or season. Also a signal uh, as appointed beforehand. It's uh, appointed. So if you have a, a dentist appointment and you miss your appointment, your tooth's going to hurt. Right? If you have a toothache, you miss your dentist appointment, you've you got to wait till the next time you can get an appointment. And in God's cycle, uh, you know, every year, uh, there's three times a year that He calls us to come before Him. This is the first time. So if you want the fullness of what God has for you, you know, the 30, 60, 100 fold, I don't, that's 90, it's 100, um, then you need to show up at the first one. Right? The first one's Passover. Passover is about deliverance, it's about freedom. And, and just speaking personally, what's happened in my life, uh, every year the Lord will bring a measure. Hello, how you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, that's your mama. <laughs> Claudia. Uh, anyway, <laughs> distract me. <laughs> all the beauty in the room. Y'all are just beautiful. Look at y'all. God, see, there is a, there is a God. Um, anyway. <laughs> Messed me up there. All right. So, <laughs> so there are three times we're supposed to. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> He's funny. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to say that out loud. God. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> yeah, okay. <sighs> All right. So, three times a year we're supposed to come before the Lord. And it says every male come before the Lord in the place that he, he said come and with what he, you know, empty-handed. We come with a... Uh, um, with whatever the Lord asks you to bring, you know, there's an offering that we bring to the Lord. And it's not always money, guys. People always think when you, when you talk about offerings, you're talking about money. And they get all, oh, you know, nobody's trying to touch your wallet. <laughs> God's just trying to do something for you. Um, you know, I've told this story many times. You know, if God can give you a perpetual blessing in your life like He did to Samson, who knows what Samson had, what long hair, right? Don't cut your hair. And as long as He didn't cut His hair, right? The command was not to cut your hair. Then God was able to bless Samson. And Samson was wicked. He did things that he wasn't supposed to do left and right. You know, he was a womanizer. He moved outside of, uh, of the ways God, God would normally work. But God was able to bless him. Why? Because he didn't cut his hair. 
So if you, God, you guys need to look in your life and, and look at the one command. I'm, I'm off on a tangent here. There's one thing that God will ask you to do that He'll. That's easy. You know how you wake up in the morning. Do you say, "I'm oh no, I'm not going to cut my hair today." No, the, it's not. A, it's not an issue with you. You just don't cut your hair, right? It's that easy. So there's a command that God has for that He would do for any of you. Um, you know, it's. If you not do that one thing, He can perpetually bless you even when we're messing up. People wonder why uh, some people are blessed and they seem to do wicked things. Uh, they probably, you know, the Lord has set them up for blessing. And, um, you know, part of that's Passover. You know, even the most wicked know when, you know, in Israel, is, Israelites will come um, on Passover not believing in Yeshua, but because there's a window that opens in heaven that blesses all the people that stand under the open window, whether you're Jew, Gentile, uh, believer or unbeliever, every, you know, it rains on the wicked and the just, is what it says. So uh, these are three times that, you know, it's raining, and whether you're wicked or just, you're going to get wet if you show up, right? If you don't show up, this is what I call, you have to pray things in. Um, the Lord wants to release blessings to us that accumulate all year long during this cycle. I've been in this cycle for probably eight or ten years now and believe me it works why well, you know and it, it, and it doesn't really it doesn't cost you anything really just show up so I would implore you show up and Passover this year is not Easter Sunday get Easter the Easter thing out of your head I mean that's that's like you know let me build you a golden rabbit Lord and worship in front of it while it poops you know colored eggs <laughs> I mean, it has nothing to do with, with God. It has to do with the fertility um, of paganism. I and mean, if you just do a little bit of research on your own, um, then you'll see that. So, uh, and that's another thing I would, I would encourage you. Go look. Don't believe what I'm telling you. Actually, go look. There's plenty of stuff on, on line now, and the Spirit in you will guide you what you, can, uh, what you should or, or shouldn't listen to. If you're watching something and some, everything in you is going, ah, turn it off. Go to the next thing. Truth knows truth in you. The Spirit of truth lives in you and it will connect you to truth. Because God's calling your generation out of the, the bondage of what uh, you know, Copernicus and all those folks put us into. Yes, I said Copernicus. Think about that one. Um, yeah. The world you live in is not what you think. Is it round or is it flat? Go look. You know, live under a ferment according to the word. If you either believe the word or you don't, right? Okay, I didn't go on that side track. <laughs> so, Genesis 1.14, And God said, Let there be lights in the hey, firmament in the, of the heavens. <laughs> Yay. Oh, come on. To divide the day from the night and let them be for signs. That signs is uh, in Hebrew is oath, O-W-T-H. And for seasons, which is moed. And for days and years. So, um, Strong's number 226 is O-W-T-H, so I don't spell that wrong. It's in the sense of appearing a signal. So, a convoca convocation, uh, which is in the Hebrew is mikra, uh, which is number 4744 from 7121. I know you're getting all that. Uh, something called out, i.e. a public meeting, also a rehearsal. So, proclaim... I'm breaking these words down for you. In Hebrew is, is Quora, which is number 7121, the root word, the idea of accosting a person um, to call out, to address uh, by name, them that are bidden, invite, mention, publish, read. So Matthew 22, 3 and 4, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they could not come again. He sent forth other servants saying, tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner, even or my oxen and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready, coming to the marriage. So um, Leviticus 23, 5 and 6 in the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's uh, Passover at the e in the evening. So if you look at um, uh, Passover this year is the 11th, not the 16th or whatever uh, that's on the Gregorian calendar. So you look at the, the 15th day of the first month of Nisan, which is 
um, the 11th of this month is the first day of actual Passover this year. So um, you don't have to know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I was like, Lord, I don't know how to celebrate Passover. What do I do? You just said come. So like the very first time I did it, I was like, woke up in the morning. <laughs> I was like, it's Passover. <laughs> I was like, here I am, Lord. What do you want to do? Um, and I forget what I did the first year, but most years... Uh, it's just acknowledging, Lord, I acknowledge you on today. Today they put you in the ground, you know. Um, and, and today is Passover for me too, you know, or just like it was, you know, the things that's, that want to come after my life and come cause uh, confusion, uh, death, uh, rob me, whatever, those things, uh, um, you know, the Lord's going to deliver me from. So I have a measure of deliverance that, that occurs in my life every year at this time. So if you need deliverance, and I'm sure, you know, everybody needs a, some form of deliverance from something. Uh, I mean, every year I, I think, you know, geez, Lord, you know, what, what, how much more is there? But there's always things. I call it the, you know, being in the ocean, barnacles get on the bottom of your butt or your boat. And you need a little scraping, you know. Lord, come scrape the barnacles off. <laughs> I try to do that monthly. Yes, I said butt. <laughs> I heard it from him first. <clears throat> so, <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you, Lord. I'm not saying that out loud either. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat, uh, must eat unleavened bread. So some of this, this stuff that people, you know, I've, I've taught this before and people are like, you're trying to bring me back into the law. It's like, no, I'm not. I'm trying to tell you a way to get free. And if you love somebody, I love my wife. If my wife says, you know, Stephen, do this, I don't go, oh, you're trying to bring me under bondage. <laughs> I just do it for her because I love her, right? Uh, even when she asks me to do stuff I don't want to do, I do it anyway because I love her. She's my wife. So that's what I call my honey-do list that seems to never get shorter. Yes, I'm talking about you. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, you get married, you'll find that you do stuff for people just because you love them, right? Even before you get married. It's just how it works, right? I don't ask, uh, just like with the Lord, when the Lord asks me to do something, I don't go into, I don't pull out my Bible and have uh, a 10-point discussion with Him of why I have to do that. I just, yes, Lord, I do. I, you know, I yield and do it. I don't try to, Complicate it. I mean, I think we complicate too many things. Just do what he said to do. It's it's that easy because he doesn't ask you to do something without some. He has something in mind. So the people that are going to stand around and and uh, you know try to figure out why I have to do that and if it if, you know if it's if the law is it not law or whatever. You're going to miss your window. You're going to miss your blessing. You know. So you know. When you get tired of getting beat up, and you will, and if you're sick, I was tired. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Like Lord, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. He's like, didn't do that, you know. So I just, in some ways, I I just automatically obeyed, and, I, and that's the way I am now. Whatever he says to do, I just do it. It doesn't hurt anybody, you know. I, he didn't tell me to go chop off, you know, ten baby heads, or that's not God, right? <laughs> so you know who you're hearing from. Hello. Because you know, some people come with me at that. Like, God didn't tell me to chop off ten babies. I said, you're not listening to the right God then. Hello. <laughs> come on. <laughs> and somebody's actually said that to me. Uh, you know, are they doll heads or real babies? I'm like, you're, you need help, buddy. <laughs> you're listening to the wrong, wrong spirit. So, Leviticus 23, 10 and 11. Speak unto the children of Israel and say to them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest, and ye shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. I, this is a, what I call a heave offering, or the wave, off, wave offering. Actually, I call it teruma. It's a little bit different. I don't have time to go into that right now, but uh, wherever the Lord tells you to, to, to give, uh, there's always um, uh, a blessing tied to your pocket. You know, I, I, when we tell you to, 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 to give something, tell, let the Lord tell you where to give. You're not saying give here or whatever. Where, the Lord might tell you to go 
sow it to uh, you know your neighbor two doors down. You know, so wherever you sow, just let the Lord tell you, because and it's not about getting in your pocketbook again. It's got but God's trying to do something for you. <laughs> You know, uh, and I'm not about telling people well, if you don't have to, you got to do that, or that's not going to happen. No, you need to listen to the Lord and let the Lord tell you where to give, because giving is tied to to how the Lord releases things for you. But you don't want to just give out of compulsory, you know, or out of somebody guilting you into giving. I hated that, man. I, I look back at all the times somebody hyped me into giving, and I'm wondering why I didn't have a harvest on that seed. Because that's not where the Lord told me to give. I gave out of guilt or gave out of, of, of hype. You know, how many times you've been on, listen to a preacher on TV. Oh, I hear the Lord said, three of you got, whatever. <laughs> you know, I fell for that for a long time. And, there, and, you know, a smart farmer tracks his harvest, right? If you sow seed, then you expect a harvest. And it's okay to expect a harvest. But let the Lord tell you where to sow your seed. So I began, you know, just listening to the Lord. I wasn't, I don't, I'm not guilted into giving anymore. I give when the Lord says to give, where the Lord says to give. And then I watch for the harvest. And it's usually not a, it doesn't take long for, you know, the, for that to come back. And uh, I don't know why I got off on that. But just listen to God. Because I hate, I mean, I absolutely hate it. It just makes me cringe when I listen to people sometimes or listen to people on TV, especially just trying to guilt you out of your daggone seed. Don't do that. If you don't hear from the Lord, don't give it. Because you're just, unless you just want to give it away. You know, there are times when Jill and I just give because we want to give. I, got, I don't have to check with the Lord for that. You know, this, we see somebody in need, we just give it to them. Um, you know, that's up to you. You're, that doesn't hurt, but, you know, just listen to God when He'll tell you. And all of you can hear Him. Every one of you can. Now, I don't think there's anybody here that doesn't hear. I don't see anybody in here that doesn't have an ear to hear. All of you can hear from him. <laughs> so, it's going a little bit different than I thought, but that's okay. It's rant night for me. <laughs> uh, Leviticus, Leviticus 23, 15, 16, and 17. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow, uh, this is all King James, uh, uh, after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the, sh the sheaf of the wave offering, seventh Sabbath shall be complete. And, and I'm going somewhere with this. So, even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, shall ye number fifty days, which Pentecost is coming after uh, Passover. And I didn't understand what that was for a long time. And I'm still learning uh, what it means to, you know, during those fifty days that of counting, what they say, counting the Omer. Um, which a omer is a unit of measure um, that they used back when. Um, you shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves <laughs> of two tents. I'm like, Lord, what's all this mean? <laughs> um, and they shall be a fine flour. They shall be bacon with leaven. Uh, they're the first fruits unto the Lord. So I'm like, Lord, you know, I understand. I don't want to just, I can go bake some bread. I did this one year, bake bread. Lord, you know, just took it literally, but um, <laughs> hey, which you can never go wrong taking the script. Let the scripture, uh, you know, speak script or explain scripture to you. That's just he's the literal God. We complicate things. Um, that was a good year, by the way. Uh, but the Lord, <laughs> you know, he, he'll tell you how it's not, you don't have to know exactly how to, to, um, and you don't have to do it exactly the way it's been done. You know, Passover, you've got to do this, have that, done this and that. Those things are, um, it, if you can get with somebody or, or with a, a group of people that actually do it that way, fine. It doesn't hurt either. But God doesn't discount you because you don't do it exactly like that. It's more about your, your attitude toward Him. Father, here I am. I don't know how to do this. And as I've walked with Him, um, I still don't do it exactly the way they prescribe it you know, if you go on to uh, um, Jewish websites. But I've not missed out on anything either. You know, the Lord has blessed me fully um, from more of me just acknowledging, hey, here I am, Lord, what do you want to do? Uh, and it's different every year. I don't do the same thing. I haven't done the same thing twice every year. Um, except for just acknowledging, here, here I am. I don't show up with Easter eggs or Easter egg basket. He doesn't like that. I'm just telling you, you need to make a choice. You're either going to serve the God of this world 
or the God that sits above the firmament, which is Papa, our Elohim, Yahweh. Whew, I feel that. Whoa. <laughs> that felt good. <laughs> He's real. And, um, and we just, we've set up, uh, uh, guys, the enemy, uh, if you think about, um, if, I was, if I was trying to fool people, I would, I would steer you away from the things that God, or I'd give you something that looked like, um, look like the original. Same thing the devil does. He just takes and counterfeits everything that God does so that he'll, he'll change the, the, the season on you. It says that the enemy has uh, the ability to change laws and times. Law and times. So if he can get you out of sync, then you don't show up for your appointment, then therefore you can't get blessed by the Lord. And then what I was saying a while ago is, anytime you miss your appointment, this is where faith calls. You have to pray things in by faith. You have to faith whatever you need in. That's harder. <laughs> then you're like, Lord, I'm short here. Um, but personal experience for Jill and I, since we've been doing this, I, I, we don't run into that shortage. It just, just show up. And this one is, I, you know, I want to say it's the most important because it's the first one of the year. And then uh, Pentecost, uh, which is 50 days later, for me is about, uh, is about provision. So the first one, the, you know, the Lord brings me a greater measure of, of deliverance. That's Passover. And at Pentecost, uh, the Lord, uh, there's a, a provision of spiritual things. You know, then anointing, uh, you know, whatever you're, you, you know, you're walking in. Um, increases so that's always good to be more powerful right more power comes you know same thing as what happened uh, with the the boys in the upper room you know we have upstairs so I'm like I go upstairs Lord I'm in the upper room <laughs> you know I, it's, I do literal things like we have I have house slippers at the the door for you know Yeshua to come visit you can have some real house slippers to put on yes, come on. home yeah. you know yeah. come into my house and you'd be surprised what doing a prophetic act does to um, ha seeing the outworking of the things that we were promised. So, and the Lord loves the, the fact that I, I have a childlike heart in that I'll walk upstairs and go, I'm in the upper room, Lord, you know, in my house. And, and he, He'll visit me. You know, everybody could use a visitation, I know, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, and He wants to be real to you that way. So, Make a do something that would cause him to, to act on what you believe. If I got a you know I got a word that said the Lord's going to come walk with you, he's going to visit you. Um, of course I got house slippers, and he hasn't visited me in my home yet. But that doesn't mean he won't. Actually, he walked with me when I was in Jerusalem when we went to Israel. Um, you know I'm looking and there he is, and he's a little far off. You know I'm looking at him. Then he's carving up an apple, and I'm standing with Jill and we're in a long line of, of people that we were with and uh, then there was a little spring there that we were um, just taking and, and uh, symbolically taking water from and drinking from the spring it was where Christ was actually born but I saw Yeshua three times as we're going through this thing and I'm like Jill I just saw him there and and then Jill went to the spring we're the last people that were in the line there Jill does that and walks up in front of me and I reached down, I'm like, here you a bang, there he was, right next to me. And you'd think you have a hundred questions that, you know, you're going to ask him. All I could do is tell him I loved him. Hey, I love you. Oh, that's all I... <laughs> 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 do, do, do you know how much I love you? <laughs> he's, he's, he's like, yeah. So, you know, he's walking with me. And, uh, you know, I only asked him one other question. I was like, why, why are you with me? He goes, because you looked for me. Because I looked for him. You were looking for me. That's why I saw him. But he walked with me about probably 40 yards. Uh, and all I could say was, geez, do you know how much I love you? I love you so much. And he's like, he kept saying, I know, I know, I know. And then we get to this little rock outcrop thing, and I was stepping off of him. And he's, he's like, I got to go. And I was like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he walked with me for 40 yards, and uh, that was uh, not where I expected, but it was, he said it because I looked for him. So are you looking for him? You know, I, I believe the Lord, I mean, he wants to be real to us. He wants to, uh, you know, I'm no different than you are. I'm no more anointed than you are. I just, 
I don't do things the, the, the way that the church taught me. I, I had to unlearn all that stuff. And I'm not against the church, okay? I love the church. You know, the church is actually a body of people, not a building. You know, I was, once I sat in, you know, and, and I only knew what I knew. I knew what they taught me until I started to, uh, you know, ask questions. My whole life has, has been about asking questions. They always told me to sit down and shut up. Even in school, sit down, shut up, sit down, shut up. You can't ask those questions. Why not? You know, and then I met the Lord and He said, ask me all you want. I was like, yay. So I started asking questions and getting answers and it didn't match up to a lot of the things that I was taught. So um, I've, I've said this over and over again. To journey is to question. To question is to journey. You've got to ask the Lord questions. If you're not getting an answer, change the question. Ask a different question. If you don't know what to ask, then ask Him what to ask. It's that easy. We complicate things. You know, I, we're in a season where I believe God wants to walk with us in a way that we, in a very tangible way. We need that in these days because of the rampant deception. You know, there's a, there is a, a deception. Oh, I feel you, Lord. Come on. <laughs> I wasn't even going to talk about this, but I'm going to touch on this. There's a deception in the world today that says it, even if the, the elect would... Uh, would be fooled if he didn't shorten those days. You know, I'll need to look at the world you live in and start asking questions. Is this really the world I live in based on what you've been taught in, in school? I'm not crazy. I'm, just, I'm telling you, I walk with the Lord. I walk with him close and ask questions. And I, I search out everything. And I'm still on a journey. But I'm, I'm telling you to go look uh, and start questioning everything you think you know about the, the earth that you live on. Um, so the Lord, because He's calling us to wake up, we're in a unique time today that the Lord, especially the youth, you know, we need to understand where we live and, and who's running the place and why they um, teach the things they teach so they can keep you dumbed down. They want to keep you stupid. You know, they want to keep you where they can control you. Amen. And that's the world we live in. Um, so... Research for yourself. I'm not, it's not meant to scare you. It's very liberating if you'll actually go look. Uh, the Holy Spirit will lead you and you'll go on a journey that you, and He'll show you things that will blow your mind. He's constantly blowing my mind. <laughs> and um, there's some things that, you know, I know when, when something's not true. The, there's a, this, you know, the whole, the Ruach lives in me. He lives in you too, Right? And it's my right to see. That's the first thing you get. You can't see the kingdom unless you're born again. If you're born again, then sight is yours. You know, and it's not always about my two eyeballs looking. You know, you have spiritual sight. Sight is about seeing what's actually there, what's true, you know, what's truth, what, you know, where the enemy has pulled uh, the shade over our eyes and, and, uh, and got us to believe. So it's your right to know the truth and it's your right to see the kingdom as it is which is around you, within you, right? So I want to encourage you to, to, to do that. And Passover is beginning being delivered. So there's a reason I went there. You, you, we need to be delivered from the, the, um, a world view that's not our, our Father's view. I want to see as my Father sees. Right? I want to see the world as, he's, as it was intended to be. And uh, we've been... You know, the enemy has, has uh, been diligently working uh, to, to fool us. You know, he's had the benefit of, of, of generation from generation to generation to generation of putting things in place, right? That the Lord has given us um, the courts to deal with so we can get away from. Um, but, uh, you know, we are born with amnesia. We come... You know, so there's you one. Father, can, I, can you remove amnesia? Can I know who I was, why I came, what it's supposed to be before I got here? And you'd be surprised that, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get, the Word says. <laughs> and sometimes we ask amiss, you know. Uh, but as you're seeking His face and see, I guarantee if you're seeking truth, the Lord will answer you. I have more truth than I can, I can deal with. I get to see things and I'm just, I'm overwhelmed. That's chill. It just overwhelms me. Uh, with the, th the things, you know, I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm like, Lord, I just please give me a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me sit on that for a little bit. And uh, I, I want to tell you those things, but I, it's like Jill has to go on her own journey too. I want to just tell her she should just believe me. <laughs> but, 
But it doesn't work that way. You know, I just went through this with the Lord. Or I'm like, she starts asking me questions. I'm like, ah, and the Lord's asking me, why are you getting frustrated? I'm like, because she said, just believe me. She goes, oh, just like, you're just supposed to believe. I'm like, I get it. So we all have to take our own journey. So, and I believe that's godly. That's what our Father has for us. You have to take your own journey. Go look for yourself. Uh, and as He wakes you up, as you're waking up, then you'll see that, you know, He's a sweetheart. <laughs> He's an all-loving God that's... Uh, uh, been misrepresented. I'll stop my tangent there. <laughs> I just want to encourage you guys. Um, yeah, let me check. Is that all right, Lord? <laughs> yes. So <laughs> he's laughing at me. <laughs> it's good to make God laugh. <laughs> Yahweh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So if you if you didn't hear anything else I heard tonight. Is, is is Passover is not Easter, and, and Passover is not a basket full of, of Easter eggs. It's just it's an abomination to him. He doesn't like that because it's actually taken in Samuel bathroom. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> no, my son. <laughs> um, it's actually, um, you know, take your journey. Wake up, take your journey, and, uh, and see the things that are precious to Him. And, and as you get closer to Him, you're not going to want to do that other stuff. It was hard for us to walk away from, you know, how do you not do Christmas when everybody else is doing Christmas? But there's a grace to step away from that. And God has blessed us tremendously. And, uh, you know, not doing Easter... You, God bless you. Watch. You don't take my word for it. Don't do, you know, sacrifice your Easter this year. And say, Lord, I'm not doing Easter. We're going to do it your way. And see how He blesses you. Don't take my word for it. Go do it. I'm just trying to help you wake up a little. For real. How many of y'all celebrate Easter? Or would have celebrated Easter this year? How many of you... See, that's what most people would say, but that's not what it means to me, but that's not what it means to, to our Father. Um, so, I'm not telling you what to or not do, but um, our... our mm, let me read something to you. I was wondering why I brought this, now I know. If you do a little research, you have the internet at home? Just uh, yeah. Um, I don't know if they still have this on there. Uh, you might want to write this down. There's a guy that did a great um, uh, teaching on this. It, it'll help you out a lot. His name is Jim Staley. What's it called, honey? Do you know it? What the name of the teaching? Is? Yeah, truth or tradition. And uh, if you just go look at that, this guy does a great job. He's done all the, uh, the work better than I can explain to you in five minutes. Just listen to it and, and uh, you know, have an open mind and see if, uh, and let the you know, Holy Spirit speak to you. And then, you know, do whatever after that. Just give it a chance to... Uh, it's Jim Staley. And it's called Truth or, T or Tradition. He does an excellent job of, of, uh, of explaining things for you about how this all came about. So, I'll do a better job than I can do in the next five minutes. Anybody have any questions other than that? Before we move on? We good? You said, Smile. Yes, sir. You said Passover yeah, it begins the 11th. First day of Passover this year is on the 11th of April. At sundown. So I don't celebrate Easter. The state of the Lord showed me all of that. My church does. And so I don't participate in there. They call it Agapalooza. Agapalooza? Yeah. And it's for the little kids and all that. And so I don't participate in any of that. But I 
serve there in all capacity. So I'm there on that Sunday mm -hmm. when they celebrate. Well, you know, it's not my job no. to, to be the Eggapalooza police, you know? <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just asking you, like, because I have peace with it, so I, I'm, and until the Lord removes my peace, There you go. That's I, it. I don't have peace with supporting their Eggapalooza, and I don't participate in that. And I wouldn't either, you know, that's all you can do. Follow your peace. Let the Lord. It doesn't do any good to argue with people. Uh, it's my job just to, to, to you know, here, here's uh, some truth. Go look. I'm just asking you to go look. I'm not telling you what to do. If, if you're here tonight, then you're here because, you know, in some way you, you, you've engaged our ministry and it spoke to you. Or maybe you heard from somebody else. Um, and I've, how, I've spoken to y'all's lives. How many people's lives have I spoken to here? Let me see your hand. So you, have to, you came back because... Why'd you come back? <laughs> okay, so... The, you know... So... You, and, I, and I'm just... You know, it's not about me. It's about you know, me being true to the call that God has, has on my life. And that's to bring people into, into truth, to, to raise sons. Actually, Jill and I's mandate is to uh, teach the teacher, train the trainer, raise sons, bring them into sonship. How do you do that? You've got to wake them up and you've got to tell them the truth. It's up to you to actually do the work. I can't do the work for you. Nobody did the work for me. The anointing I carry is because I did the work. You know, salvation is free. The rest you're going to earn. A lot of people don't like to hear that, but it's absolute truth. I've had to, to it's, it says it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, it's the glory of kings to search it out. What's that mean? Work out your salvation. Then you work out your salvation through fear and trembling. Yeah, you're searching things out. You have a responsibility. Kingship is about taking responsibility. It's, it's easy for any of us to just sit and go, okay, somebody do it for me. God's looking for people that will take responsibility because your life goes beyond what is the here and now. If you're going to rule and reign with Christ, we do it here and there. You're training for reigning, whether they call it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm learning uh, about who I actually was then, who I, and it's helping me become who He's called me to be, you know, beyond here. I want to rule and reign. I want to sit close. I want to be in the council of, of our Father, of Yahweh. I don't want to be in the outer court, you know, and people that won't do the work are going to be out there. I don't need, I don't want somebody to have to bring out the glory into the outer courts. I want to be able to come into the uh, Holy of Holies and actually operate in the counsel of God. How do you do that? you got to get to know Him. you got to show up and take responsibility in the courts of heaven and, and uh, whatever He's teaching you. Part of that, I mean, the very first thing you do is come out of the world and come out of their cycle and that's coming out of Christmas and Easter. I'm just telling you the truth. The very first thing that God required of me is stop doing Easter, stop doing Christmas. Start worshiping me in the, in, in the way uh, the world said and start worshiping me in the way I said worship me. And that was hard for me. You have to make a decision right there. Nobody made that decision for me and it was hard for our family. I told Jill, I was like, listen, I'm not doing that anymore. But still our family was doing it and I didn't want any part of it because, um, you know, I'd already... But they have to have their own. It was hard for Jill to walk out. Jill, I mean, she can attest to you it was, it was hard for her because that's what she grew up with. But God has blessed us. You know, I grew up with it too, but it was, you know, I'm, I just made a decision. I'm going to follow God, our Father Yahweh, uh, and do the, the things that He says because nothing was changing before. <laughs> you can keep doing what you've been doing, expect a different result. What do they call that? Crazy. You know? And, and some of y'all don't know my story. I was full blown schizophrenic. Well, bone schizophrenic. So I, I had eight voices that spoke to me, and every eight hours it switched to eight different voices. 24-7, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It was, it was a tough life. You know, I'd, I had to learn to live in two different realities. But, you know, um, it, it taught me to, to hear the voice of the Lord. The thing that why you're sitting here today and why you come is because you want to hear from the Lord. Well, that was all birthed from all that the price I had to pay to carry the anointing that I have. You know? So, uh, and I don't make any apologies for that. I, I've worked out my salvation there. I can hear very well. 
but it cost me a, it was a great price that it cost me to carry what I carry. Um, but everybody has a, a opportunity to yield to the Lord, walk through, you know, carry your cross. Christ was the, um, the example. If you're not, if you feel like you're not going to suffer, you're not, if, you know, Christ suffered so I don't have to, you got the wrong message. It's, you know, it's true. You know, he, he said, you know, pick up your cross and daily. Yeah, that means we have to yield to our ways and, and, you know, he's not asking you to die a physical death. He's asking you to die, you know, to your flesh. You know, to, to the things that, you, you know, you, you want, to your ways, the things you've been taught. You know, this is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Your brain, this is the tree of life is your heart you know this is where he resides this talks us out of things the rations and reasons and uh, because of the things that we've been taught right i'm just saying yield a little let the lord teach you something else uh, there's another rant i guess we'll call this a rant night <laughs> i mean when you know something it's just like uh, uh my children i i I don't want my children to suffer the things that I suffered. How many of you got kids? You know, a lot of you got kids, right? How many you've got to deal with them, and you're like, "Come on!" <laughs> they just don't get it, but you've experienced something else, and they'll just look at you and, and do something totally different. And it hurts my heart because you can't. And that's my plea to you guys: please don't go the way I went. Don't do the things that I did that don't work. I'm just trying to, you know. And I always tell myself, Lord, I, I hope I'm not belligerent that way. That I've learned as I've gotten older just to yield. And do it not because I have to understand it or just because you said, <laughs> you know, if you have kids, you'll understand that later. <laughs> just, do, you know, you'd hate to see your kids suffer. I hate to see my children suffer. Sometimes they just got to walk through it their own way, you know, and I did the same thing. But I learned the hard way in a lot of ways. Uh, but back to, uh, you know, just yield. I'm just... Again, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying that this is how this is our walk. This is our experience, and there's a lot of other people that have the same experience. And as God is waking us up, you know, look around, ask other people, you know, engage with other people that are um, actually getting free from those things, and and listen to their experience, and then just do what God told you to do. Do what, you know? You got to follow your peace. Yeah, that's part of having a, a relationship. My whole walk is about having a personal relationship with God, not about doing a set of things. I know what's right and what's wrong in my heart, and, and I know what upsets Him and you know, what pleases Him. So again, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just encouraging you to go look. Go look at why you do the things that you do. Why do you celebrate Easter? You were taught that, right? Everybody's done it before you. And we're not saying you have to be mad at anybody that taught you that. Just go look and, 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 and maybe God will teach you a new way. I don't know how, any other way to say that. But I, you know, our life has been blessed because we came out from there. Try it. That's all I'm saying. You might like it. You know? well, they say to Mikey and, and, and <laughs> give it to Mikey. He'll eat it, eat anything. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. What's that cereal? Life. Life. Yeah, good cereal. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Cinnamon life. <laughs> okay, Jill's going to talk for a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who don't talk I'm turning it over to her <laughs> any more questions before I... mm -hmm. hopefully I answered your question what about like a Seder, like a Seder? you know I, we've done one yeah. um, and we've not done one still blessed I've done it, so. so you know we can get legalistic about anything uh, again you know the Lord said show up I show up he said come three times a year so if that's in the word then we ought to, you know, adhere to the word. And it was he didn't say come, and he gave two instructions: come and don't come empty-handed. Okay, Lord, where do I go and what do I bring? That's it. And uh, he speaks to me, and I just do that. So try there, start there. He met me there; he'll meet you there. He's no respecter of persons. Don't we don't have to complicate it? 
just acknowledge him. That's what the slippers are in my house. But of course, he came a different way. But he came. I was, you know, blown away. What would you do if God showed up in your living room? If Yeshua, you know, pop, here he is. <laughs> I love you. Probably you probably know, <laughs> will. Yeah. I mean, I was dumbfounded. <laughs> you know, you think you'd have a bunch of questions. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned three times. One is Passover. Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. He'll come tabernacle with you. Uh, those are three times a year. You know, there's, there's deliverance, there's provision, and then there's presence. You know, the, the tabernacle is about God's presence. And the presence of God comes through me all the time. I feel Him all the time. I walked many years, didn't feel anything. I feel Him now. You know, just talking to y'all in the last, you know, 45 minutes or whatever it's been, he, it bursts of Him come through me. When, especially when I start talking, if I, if I hit on a truth that, that He really wants you to get, I feel like a, a burst of energy comes out of me. It's a burst of presence. I call it, you know, God kisses. He kisses me when I... When, <laughs> and, I'm, you know, I've just learned to be able to stand in it. You know, two years ago, I'd have been like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'm still like, whoa, wait a minute, you know. You've known me for a year. You know, I'm, I'm learning to stand in the anointing. You know, when I first met you, I was like, whoa, I'd have to... <laughs> now, when it, <laughs> now when it comes through, it's like, wow, that feels good. You know, my body, I don't ever want to get used to it, but, you know, you'll learn to stand in the presence of the Lord so that you can actually minister from that place. And that was the point. It's not, you know, because there was times when I'd just be on the floor. <laughs> no good for you. <laughs> It, it, it doesn't help, you know. <laughs> it doesn't help to minister to you if I'm rolling around in the floor. Um, but now I'm able to stand in the anointing and, and, and speak. So, uh, But that's for everybody, right? He wants you to be able to stand in, that, in this presence. One more question? Any more questions? Anybody? Nobody? Somebody? Y'all aren't mad at me, are you? I just told you the truth. I don't want to make you mad. <laughs> and, and we don't all have to agree either. Yeah, I'm just, you know, we don't all have to agree either. I love everybody. We can still be friends. Just don't believe me. Go check for yourself. This is my beautiful wife, Jill. I wouldn't be able to do what I do without her. There's something about a... a uh, my girl. Ten years, she's still awesome. Uh, yeah. Here, let me just leave you alone. That or whatever's on your...